The city of Madrid dates back to the 9th century. You can still see the remains of an ancient Arabic wall in the Cuesta de la Vega next to the royal palace in the Catedral de la Almudena. Throughout Madrid's history, other places have become significant and emblematic. The Puerta del Sol is one of the most well-known spots in Madrid. This is kilometer zero, the starting point of all the main roads in Spain. It is also the location of the clock that sounds the 12 gongs that mark the beginning of the new year. A popular meeting place in Madrid is the Oso y el Madroño statue at the beginning of Carmen Street. It is the symbol of the city. In the Puerta del Sol, there is a famous statue of King Carlos III, who is known as Madrid's best mayor. The story of his legend is written around the pedestal of the statue. To read it entirely, you have to go around the statue 13 times. The Plaza Mayor is one of the places you must visit in Madrid. It dates back to the 15th century when you used to stand outside the city as its main marketplace. It suffered three fires and many changes until it became what we see today. Bullfights, inquisition trials, and even public executions all took place here. The most important building and also the first one built is the Casa de la Panaderia that today hosts the main tourism office. Notice its mural decoration from 1994 representing mythological characters. It's an enclosed square, rectangular, and completely surrounded by three-story buildings. It has nine access gates, being the Arco de Cuchilleros, the best known of them all, on the southeast corner of the square. The bars and restaurants located underneath the porches of the square are well known as well as the terraces. A Christmas market is celebrated here in December since 1860. And on Sundays and holidays, there's also a numismatic and a stamp collector's market. The green spaces in the Retiro Park and in the Casa de Campo are considered to be Madrid's lungs. They date back to 1630, when the Duke of Olivares, King Felipe IV's private minister, gave the king some lands. He also ordered the construction of a castle, the Cason del Buen Retiro, which today belongs to the Prado Museum. The Retiro is the perfect place to play sports, take a boat ride in the lake, listen to live music, or watch different types of street performers. Although you can go any day, the park is most frequented on Sundays. Along which, there are monuments and places of interest that include the Palacio de Cristal, which originally served as a showroom for plants and spices from the Philippines. Currently, it is used as an exhibition space for the National Museum Centro de Arte Reina Sofia. The Rose Garden, inspired by the Parisian Bagatelle, is highly notable. Or the Big Pond, where, for a small price, you can take a ride on a rowboat or in its waters you can also practice canoeing. The Fallen Angel statue is the only statue in the world dedicated to the devil, and it is found in the Retiro. Moreover, from the month of May to the month of June, Madrid holds its Feria del Libro book fair here in the Retiro Park. The Puerta de Alcalá is one of Madrid's most representative monuments. It is located in the Plaza de la Independencia, very close to the Retiro Park's main entrance, which is known as the Puerta de España. King Carlos III ordered the construction of the Puerta de Alcalá in substitution of an old gateway in ruin. Francesco Sabatini was the engineer who built it. The construction was inaugurated in 1778, 
not as a monument, but as a real gateway. In 1869, the square was remodeled and named the Plaza de la Independencia. Until then, a fence ran along both sides protecting the city from the east. It has five windows, each used to be shut in the afternoon. In the top center, there is a headstone that reads, Carlos III, year 1778. The Plaza de Oriente is located east of the Royal Palace, next to the popular Bailén Street. The recent remodeling makes the square reach the palace's facade, making it ideal for pedestrians. The Royal Palace is the official residency of the royal family, although nowadays it's only used for official ceremonies. The last king to reside here was Alfonso XIII. With its 2,800 rooms, it is the biggest palace in Western Europe. It houses a great collection of paintings by Goya, Velázquez, El Greco, Caravaggio, and more. Also, it holds one of the largest armories with pieces from the 12th century. It is open from Monday to Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays and holidays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The normal visit costs 8 euros and 9 euros for the guided tour. 350 for children, students, and pensioners. Wednesdays, the visit is free for citizens of the European Union. You must make your reservations by calling 91-454-8800. The Almudena Cathedral, Madrid's cathedral, is located adjacent to the Armeria Square of the Royal Palace. You can access the church on Bailen Street and the crypt through the Mayor Street. It is 102 meters long and 73 meters high. It exemplifies different architectural styles. Neoclassical on the outside, Neo-Gothic on the inside, Neo-Romantic in the crypt. Construction began in 1883, and after facing many changes and obstacles, it was finally finished a century later. Pope John Paul II consecrated it in 1993. The cathedral is open between 9 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. El Rastro is the biggest and most popular flea market in Madrid. It opens on Sundays and holidays in the Embajadores district. It is open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Its stalls hold almost everything. Most visitors walk through around 11 a.m. Its name comes from the leather workers that used to inhabit the area. For more information on Madrid's most emblematic places, visit www.esmadrid.com.